What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. Today we are talking about the Essie Handmade with Love collection for summer 2022. We've got nine brand new polishes, all cream finishes. I wouldn't say that they're particularly summery, but I think they're just good any time of year staples, which I think is fairly typical of Essie to come out with. So if you haven't heard of Essie before, I'd be very surprised because I think it's a very popular brand, but they are a mainstream salon brand that is found in a ton of drugstores. They are eight free, meaning they are free of eight of the potentially harmful ingredients that are often found in nail polish. They are vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients, and they're also cruelty free, so they don't test their products on animals. So like I said, we've got a pretty basic collection here, nothing particularly groundbreaking, but overall, I think I've really been enjoying Essie a lot more lately. In the past, I haven't reviewed them as much because I just wasn't a fan of their formula, but I think it's improved a lot since then. So let me show you the swatches, then we'll talk about pricing, availability, my thoughts on the collection as a whole, and then we can chat about it even more in the comments. So roll the swatch footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I am using the Orly Bonder base coat. So starting off with this first shade in pursuit of craftiness, this is a super dusty purple leaning periwinkle cream shade, and this is a kind of color that Essie does fairly often, whether it leans more purple like this one or more blue like some of their more popular shades, but I think it is a color that they do really well. And this one had a really nice, super easy formula. It was two quick coats for full opacity. It self leveled out really nicely, and it has that nice dusty tone to it that feels like it would be perfect for any time of year. Moving on, we have the shade Pencil Me In, which is a medium pinky cream shade, and this one was super super opaque. As you can see, it covered up my visible nail line in the first coat. I did end up doing two coats for full coverage, but honestly, with short nails, you might even be able to get away with one. Again, it just feels like a kind of classic shade in any time of year color. It works for summer, but I don't think it's necessarily specifically a summer color. And again, the formula was just super easy to work with and very self-leveling. Next up, we have the shade Handmade with Love, and this one is that sort of corally, orangey, red cream shade. Again, a really Really nice formula here. I feel like this sort of reddish color tends to have a more jelly-like formula, so I was really glad to see that they had a more cream finish where it just felt really, really opaque. So I did two coats for full coverage. It did cover up that visible nail line in the first coat, but I felt like I was able to get a lot more of a bright color with that second. So here it is in two coats, full coverage. Again, really easy formula, and this one actually does feel like a pretty summery red shade. Moving on, we have the shade 2 DIY for or to die for, depending on how you want to say it. And this one is a deeper orange cream shade. And again, really impressive opacity here. So it was full coverage in the first coat, but I did end up doing a second. It ended up drying down slightly darker than it looked in the bottle, but it's still a really pretty shade. I found this one to be pretty interesting, especially to be released in the summer, because this to me feels like a fall orange. Like it feels like a pumpkin-y color. I think it's just a little bit deeper than my preference preference for orange summer colors, but it's still really beautiful. Next up, we have the shade Brush It Off, and there was a little bit of separation in the bottle here. That was what it looked like even after shaking it up, but it didn't seem to affect the color of the polish at all. And that is a really orangey toned medium beige shade. Again, it dried down slightly darker than it looked on the nails when I first applied it, but it was extremely opaque. Covered up my visible nail line in the first coat. Perfect coverage in two coats. And again, this kind of feels a little fall slash autumn inspired for me, but it's a really good any time of year neutral color as well. Next up, we have the shade So Gifted, which I love the name of this one. And this is a really light peachy pink neutral cream. And this was the only one that didn't have a super opaque formula for me. I was actually pretty impressed with the first coat. I thought it was gonna be a two coater, but unfortunately, even after two coats, it was still a tiny bit patchy. So I ended up putting on a third. I was actually really hoping when I saw this one in the bottle that it was gonna be a sheer because Essie does some really beautiful neutral sheer shades, but this one did end up being a full coverage cream. So here it is in three coats. It's a pretty color 
color. Again, it's just a nice basic any time of year neutral. I know I keep saying it, but I feel like this collection in general doesn't feel particularly summery. It kind of just feels like good colors to add to your collection if you don't already have them. And moving on, we have the shade Crochet Away, which is another kind of color that Essie does pretty frequently. And this one is sort of a grayed out medium brown cream. This one was another one that was just super, super opaque. Honestly, I would wear this as a one coater. It fully covered up my visible nail line and it gave me enough coverage that I felt like I could definitely wear it in one coat. But I am showing you a second coat just so you can see what that looks like. And of course I do have short nails. So if you have longer nails, you probably won't reach opacity as quickly as I do, but it's another really pretty shade with a really great formula. Next up, we have the shade Piece of Work. And this to me was the standout of the collection. I think this is the funkiest color out of all of the shades that they did for this set. It is a chartreuse green cream. It definitely has that strong yellow vibe, but it also feels a little limey. So this one, I thought in the first coat that it was going to end up being a three coater, but it was just barely perfect coverage in two coats for me. So again, if you have longer nails, you might need a third, but I was really impressed with the coverage of this one. OPI has a very similar color that on me is a three coater. So was just really impressed with the coverage here. And I'll probably reach for this one sooner because I prefer a two coater over a three coater. And last but definitely not least, we have the shade Cut It Out, which is a soft gray, almost grayish. Like it has a little bit of a warmth to it, neutral cream shade. And this one is such an incredible formula. I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was really impressive. And after trying it on, I think this actually became my favorite of the collection over even that chartreuse shade, even though I thought that that one was kind of the standout. This one to me felt like the best because it had such an impressive formula. I'm always looking for a really good, high quality neutral. And I just felt the opacity in this one was perfect. And the formula was so easy to work with. So here are all of the colors together. And I have to say, looking at them as a whole, it feels very similar to other collections that Essie comes out with. I think for the most part, they tend to really play it safe. And I think that you can see that pretty well in this collection. Even the sort of brighter colors tend to be shades that they do a lot, like that green shade, the periwinkle, even maybe that brighter pink color. But overall, I think they're really good. The quality of Essie has definitely improved improved over time. I really like the coverage now and I think they're pretty consistently opaque. And I think if you don't have any of these colors in your collection, this is a good brand to have. So yeah, that is the collection. And overall, I did enjoy them. I think the majority of them had a really nice opacity. And like I said, I've been enjoying the Essie formula a lot more in my previous experiences, especially when I first started getting into nail polish, I found that they were a lot more inconsistent. So there were some shades that just weren't self-leveling. They weren't very opaque, but I would say as a whole, they've really leveled out a lot and they're pretty consistent. When I pick up a new shade, I pretty much know what the formula is going to be like. One thing I did notice in this collection though, I don't know if maybe I just haven't noticed it since they switched the wide flat brush with the rounded tip, but I felt like the brush in this collection was a lot longer than usual. It didn't really affect my painting process as much, but I've never noticed it in the past. So I definitely want to compare my Essie brushes from recent collections because I just noticed that it was really weirdly long. So I, I don't know. Let me know if I'm the only one who thought that. But anyway, these polishes come in 13.5 milliliter bottles. And like I said, they do have the wide flat brush. It's got a rounded tip on it for easy application. They are available at Ulta for $10 USD each, but I saw that a few of them are also available on Amazon for $9 USD. So I will link them down in the description. You can check that out if you're interested. And like I said, they're also available in a bunch of drugstores. It can usually just be hit or miss as to whether they are available in store. But yeah, I would love to know what you think of this collection. Which color is your favorite? Which color is your least favorite? Do you like to see this type of all cream basic collection from Essie? Or would you like to see something else from them? Leave it all in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoyed my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I also have a podcast. It's not about nail polish, but it's about nerdy movie friends 
franchises. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, I will link that down in the description as well. And of course, a huge shout out to my Cosmic Admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Rocket Man's daughter, and Paola. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Kim and Kim wants to know, what is something less obvious, silly, or obscure that you think you'll miss when you move away from New Jersey? So if you missed it, I am moving. I'm currently in the process of moving right now. I do have a second channel. It's my vlog channel where I share all of like my behind the scenes life outside of just nail polish reviews. And I'm actually vlogging weekly as I go through the packing and moving process. I'm actually moving across the country. So it's a pretty big move for me, but it's definitely going to be interesting. I've lived outside of New Jersey before, but I wasn't a huge fan. And I think that there are a few major things that I tend to miss when I'm not living in New Jersey. Those main things being pizza, which I don't really eat anymore because I don't eat dairy anymore, and bagels. And I think just bread in general tastes better in the tri-state area. Not a huge fan of bread in other states. I think generally speaking, it's just a little soft. And here in New Jersey, New York, it's like usually got a hard outside and a soft inside and it's just way better. Those are some of the big things that I will miss. And of course, I'll miss being a coastal state, being relatively close to the beach. I think I feel very connected to the beach. I grew up right by the beach. How many times did I just say beach in that sentence? But I don't know if this is an obscure thing because I have talked about it before, but I think I'll miss pork roll a lot. If you don't know what pork roll is, that is also pretty much a New Jersey thing, although it is available outside of New Jersey, like in the surrounding states. I don't even know how to describe it. I guess it's just like, it's like a mix between ham and bacon, I guess, but I, I don't really like ham at all. I, I am a fan of bacon, but I'm not a huge fan of bacon. I think pork roll is just the best tasting. It's kind of like a, like a sandwich meat, but you put it on breakfast sandwiches. So you know how a lot of places will have like a bacon, egg and cheese. We have pork roll, egg and cheese, and you can also buy it in the grocery store and we do buy it in the grocery store. So we eat it a lot. And I think that's one of the things that I'm really going to miss. So I guess I don't think that's that obscure, but I think it is something that's like very New Jersey specific that I am going to miss. Oh, and I'm also going to miss being pretty close to New York, although I haven't really been to New York in a while and I haven't really enjoyed it in a while. So maybe I won't miss it that much. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.